the development and he be silent. Their excuses are permanent. We've learned it from the president. His regime is always reset. Mr. Ino said his lies are sufficient. Continue to be patient. And S took everything and went. That story is already patient. President of torment, dwarf recruitment, chance on employment. But when will the senseless suffering cease? Moving on this since we are babies. I'm not talking about the party kids. Those are different types of breeds. The influential bullies. Leaving us because of TDs and bullies. Using political influences to cover our bad deeds. People of overseas studies. We're not being jealous of your stolen jewelries. I'm sorry, concealed monies. We did not create the differences. You are the ones building the fences. So now we two are taking the fences by speaking live senses to your five senses, using rhyming vocabularies in their right sequences to make emphasis on the crisis and the causes whilst entertaining the masses. And what I tell you now is these causes. As fellow citizens, you are our siblings and bodies, mommies and daddies. God knows I love you on top of all this, and it is what it is. But don't compromise our country's peace. Feed the people's bellies. Leave us to a few clothes. We won't die from their cleaning two genes. We are self made G's, G for geniuses. We will be young in ages, but we respect our self images. So we invest on honest faculty wages. Never chance to fall in colleges, but we can read and write senses on pages. So, amidst of all learning challenges, we refuse to be savages. <coughs> and speaking of savages, we are now breaking out of cages to bring unique speeches to global stages, presenting messages with footages of the bondages, corruption, and courages. I mean, I've seen this. Because I've been silenced by all means on a land where corrupt human beings influence electoral bullies. Oh, yes, we've all got different callings. But we can't be gifted as God willings and want to spend everything on countless darlings. We too have feelings. So we strive in mornings and evenings to give our lives meanings. On the next draws the next polling curtains, giving us the right to vote out taxes and all their small, small committees. We remove thieves from state offices with their fake promises, corrupt practices, and zero services. But still, then don't listen to their excuses or cock and bull stories, don't join their rallies. Let's just stay like this. Next election will bring us justice. Why, well, Preso, please, before coming here to tell us fake stories, fix your failed ministries and help us talk to the police. To so stop pesting us for side monies, we are not the ones holding on their salaries. We've already got enough worries, including your bad governments and policies. They are friends in other countries, are dislodging armories, making great sacrifices, taking bullets for armies. You think they are in actual movies? It is police of service. Ours are police movies, Bamado police. They arrive at crime scenes after the deal has been done since. Then they patrol down cities to chase boys for cannabis. And impressed ladies, why well, first of all, good, please? Bike riding keeps you at ease. Stop killing our brothers for booking bills. Get your families and some carry responsibilities. And also carry your kids and kids to your marriage. Your enemies. The fellow has all his license and he has been using them since. We see chasing for missing bike steerings, exposed bike wirings, how your wife needs cranes. No, I'm a brother. to and sick feelings. They even charge us for not carrying masks on our chains. What about the two sergeants? With their beers under curtains, is Corona allergic to their jeans? Or are they black Chinese? Or Corona immune police? For what country is this? They should have sent us to other places with better human beings. That's why they import disease and it's come to inject our bodies. Go gain Western clothes and advocate for foreign bodies. We've got countless narratives of big notorious thieves, politicizing opportunities and facilities, making our people flee to other societies. Aren't you ashamed of your colleagues in other countries? Mungo fully rest in peace. See how proud everybody is of your developmental strategies. We started from day one in office till we are called to insane abyss. I also celebrate people this because I've learned at least that true development comes through strict policies. Look at the influence president with kisses. Look at the brought out and right. Um, good evening, um, compatriots. Good evening, um, comrades of the APC. Um, this is not the APC online TV platform at the diaspora, and me with the talk to na, me, na comrade Owen Kasu. Um, today, na the 10th of April 2022, time at just 12 minutes past seven o'clock. Uh, I want to make a quick apologies for this late um, start because um, we uh, click on the wrong page. We go live on the wrong page, and so now that's great. This, but nevertheless, we're just only about you know five, seven minutes late. With me today, um, get me most beautiful um, co-hosts. I don't know the person, but Doctor Sweet Bonita, 
Bunita, Dr. Sweet Bunita, please come forward and talk to us. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not from one of those, so me know. <laughs> hey, hey, Sweet Bonita, everybody now don't become a doctor now. Everybody now, under the mango tree. <laughs> dominion, dominion doctors. I'm not part of, I'm not part of it. Doctor Sweet Bonita is a new title. I'm not taking it. I'm not taking it. I'm sorry, I'm not taking it. Sorry, sorry. I'm not taking it. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, sir. <laughs> My name is Sweet Bonita. No, doctor, please. I'm not part of those fake doctor business. No, no, no. I just got my first degree, which is really, really good for me. And I'm happy. So I would like to say good evening to everyone and good evening, Sweden. And also good evening to our Muslim brothers. And also this year, if we can all remember, if we all notice, both the Lent and the Muslim um, fast are going together. Today is Palm Sunday, so I would like to say happy Palm Sunday to all my beautiful Christians. <clears throat> yes. Sweet Bonita, thank you very much. You don't decline me, me the doctor title out on you. Never mind, no problem. Anyway, um, we the calm discuss very important topic now. So today, um, with me at the platform, <clears throat> of course, apart from the um, technical team we did at the platform today, we get to distinguish guests them. We um, very eloquent in their the, um, deliberations and then understand the topic we'll discuss now. So today, uh, we now, uh, <clears throat> one of them from McKinney constituency 038, if I'm not making any mistake, no, no, we honorable SOS. Um, honorable SOS, please come forward and just say hi to comrades them at the APC Diaspora online TV platform. Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, comrades. I want to you. I want to greet you now all. Special greetings to my constituents, Ramadan Mubarak. Ramadan Mubarak to them. Yes, indeed. Uh, within our Ramadan, of course, um, should be to observe the Ramadan, of course. And um, today, our Palm Sunday, like we say to the Christians, happy Palm Sunday to them, which I wasn't aware of. And of course, we get the doctor himself, the doctor we go through the academic discipline. We um, getting um, doctorate PhD degree from Oxford. Um, if I can, if I can be right in this one, you will correct me. Um, <clears throat> I don't know how we doctor will feel for see people them all over Sierra Leone, over a thousand or more people, and they get degree under mango tree. We really, really, but we'll, we'll, we'll go into that one. But um, make come live and let's just say hi to comrades them with uh, Dr. Alfred Vinod Fuller. Over to you, sir. Oh, thank you very much. Can you hear me? Clearly, sir. <laughs> uh, thank you, Mr. Kamara and uh, Sweet Bonita um, for hosting us. I want to say hello to all APC comrades a diaspora and a home, while inclusive my brother here, SOS. One for thank you so much for giving us this platform. It is a privilege and honor to be here. So I thank you profusely. Thank you very much, um, Dr. Vinod Fuller, Alfred Vinod Fuller. Um, we want to start the show, and um, this is a very important one for me. Um, even though um, we can laugh about all in degree business as so they happen in the country and everything, it seems, you know, laughable, but it's very damaging. It gets a very damaging effect on the credibility of the academic system in the country, as Sierra Leone, in the Athens of Africa when it comes to um, education. And now they don't actually, you know, destroy them. They don't damage them. And not only that, professional institutions, then they were, you know, were implicated in this. You know, no wonder we they see the judiciary, we they see the police force, the armed force, the health, and other private sectors them. Then they bring up people them inside and institutions them, where basically they, they damage with the entire system. You know, so we don't see, say, this thing going to go on for years. 
without the, with knowledge. But now the tinong can leak. See your serious problem. We don't create big, big um, issue for we in the country. We go make the international community no go, no go see Sierra Leone as any credible country when it comes to academic, um, you know, documentation. You see, everybody in documents now will be questioned. But anyway, the topic today, now the four years misery where we as Sierra Leoneans then go through under the Bureau administration, SLPP. And these are some of the evidences of what you will only go through. So um, before we start the show proper, I want to, I want to share this video with me to make me waiting, you know, we'll be to go through and then we'll come back and discuss this very um, topic we'll get today. We are the four years of bio in misery where it on left with we as a nation. Now let's start off with the convention and Sierra Leoneans are discussing academic fraud claims that allegedly implicates top government officials. The claims were raised by one John Idris who claims to speak for the million Sierra Leone academicians against fake degree holders. And among those implicated in the claim is the Inspector General of Police and Boso Ola, who holds a honorary doctorate degree from the Africa Graduate University in Uganda. I've just spoken to John Idris Lahir and began by asking what informs his resolve. What actually inspires me, um, I would say there are many reasons. The universities in Sierra Leone, they are producing students, but yet still, the, the, you know, joblessness is very high. But when you go to those offices, these offices, they are packed with um, with employees. When you ask some of them, where, we, where did you study? They'll say, oh, I, you know, I, it was an online course. So I began to study these people, the trend as to how they got admitted into these colleges. And I came to realize that it is because of the type of education they are getting, their academic credentials that has actually created, you know, a major economic uh, problem in the country. And, and Dr. John, maybe to interrupt you, are you in a way saying key Sierra Leonean officials don't have the academic qualification and therefore not qualified to hold the public offices? Some of them do have the academic qualifications, but once they occupy these government positions, they tend to go by, I would say, by fake PhDs, masters that gives them undue advantage in their places of work. But, so but Dr. John, the but Dr. John, the, the claims you're raising are quite mm -hmm. outrageous, I should say. Because these universities where these officials have earned their credentials have clarified that their degrees are authentic. But the university that clarified the issue um, is not an authentic university. Mm -hmm. It is the same criminal you know, network mm -hmm. that continues to evolve, changing names, mm -hmm. operating the same clandestine way. But, so I but, don't think, but talk um, about a, a scam. Do you think fake degrees is a concerning issue in Sierra Leone? It is a concerning issue. When the war ended, people decided that it, the best way to make it is to either fake it until you get it. This very university that gave this clarification, they have graduated over, over, over a thousand people. How many of them are pharmacists today? How many of them are nurses today? How many of them are even employed in the office of the president? These are the key questions. And this has to stop. This has to stop. And, and you sound pretty disturbed by this uh, development, Dr. Idris. Uh, you talk about you are speaking for your people. Which constituency is this? The Sierra Leone constituency, all 7 million people, I speak for them. Those with the fake degrees, they constitute less than 0.1% of the population. And what and uh, what bothers me is the fact that um, the Inspector General of the Police, who mm. knew that, um, you know, the syndicate is in operation, He's a graduate of this um, of, of, of this very university. And, and you seem pretty determined uh, with this course. Uh, to what length are you willing to go? Well, I will continue to talk about this until maybe lay my life for, for this course. The world is watching. The world is listening. Soon, the international other countries will refuse to accept degrees from Sierra Leone when Sierra Leoneans apply to go and say they want to go study overseas. Yes, and uh, for purposes of just clarity to our listeners who are not Sierra Leoneans, how many officials are you talking about? I'm talking about, what would I say, close to a thousand, the military. And where are you drawing your findings from? Because the very university that is offering these degrees, how can you get a PhD? 
One, there is no dissertation. Two, no one, no, no one examined that dissertation. Secondly, you did not go for conferences. This is the problem. Well, clearly, a dejected John Idris, a proclaimed voice of millions of Sierra Leone academicians who are against fake degree holders, too. Okay, um, let me stop it there. Uh, we don't listen to, to this, and um, I believe, say, people that we don't go through the academic discipline, like the SOSDM and all the other people, that, like we, in Associate Bonita, we don't go through academic discipline. We know what he take for get a degree. You know, only for come now, now, now for can see people in the go acquire a degree. And this is not just people, these are top officials of this government go acquire a degree. What do you take, first of all? Are you see that, um, Honorable SOS? What are your first reaction to this kind of thing what you see in this country? A very, very sad. A very, very sad, as you rightly point. We, we don't go through academia, proper academia. Like me, where they talk to you, so a school of Abbey College, then in the 90s. Then at that time, for lay you get a honors degree where I get in economics, you get for go through so many difficulties, academic challenges, hard work, sleepless nights. For lay they invite you to the honor school. Upon that invitation, you also get a challenge, not for graduates with a bad degree. That is to say, a third class or an ATP degree. When you don't go through all that. You graduate with that upper or second class lower, you can stand any side tall and speak. And people will know, say, yes, this is not a true graduate from the University of Sierra Leone. We're in a Fabi College at the time. Okay. So um, it's a shock. Mm -hmm. We get the shock. Mm -hmm. Before we see PhD, we're not the highest degree in academia for let people learn. Where some of them, sadly enough, went through these good institutions like Fabi College, IPAM, Jalan University, just for overnight, go graduate with PhDs. It's sad and you know good for this nation. And I believe, say, like waiting, the, the clip we just don't play, it really, really gets a devastating effect on the economy of this country. Mm -hmm. A very, very devastating effect because you will be having the wrong people in places of decisions where they take this country forward. Where yeah. Englishman, when I will go to school, you see, if they get square pegs in round holes. Yeah. Because these PhD guys will not be able to articulate or represent or take yeah. decisions, inform decisions or analyze yeah. issues. Because the whole thing about PhD, now about analysis, about issues for let you able to come up with the best outcome. Yeah. So if you go just overnight, you well know, say, PhD, you know, they get them in less than three years to four years, then somebody will give you one year, then you take them, say you're not a doctor. It is really, really unfortunate to those of our friends of Sierra Leoneans. We don't go down to that kind of level there. Okay, thank you very much. Um, it's an insult to you, um, Dr. Alfred Vinod Fuller. This is an insult. And um, not only that, um, people that we don't acquire, we not acquire a degree within the health sector. You know, go go to them place today, go kill people picking them for nothing. We don't know, get no degree, no training whatsoever. Then go acquire some top degree, go sit down at some institution where they will live them the day, that they will live them live. You know, what in what in what in, what is your reaction to that, Dr. Vinod Fuller? Oh, thank you very much, Ms. Kamara, um, for this very sensitive and crucial um, topic. I think uh, SOS and uh, the, the, the last speaker, Bidon, make a very good presentation. But let me just add to it. This, we are calling this tsunami of uh, academic scandal, don't help for contaminate and taint the educational system in our country. And it gets political undertones and consequences. 
Um, I'm shocked because we study here, as you rightly mentioned, at Oxford, that um, the University of Sierra Leone give credence to these bogus PhDs. When we were done attain and through rigorous and extensive academic research, we then just don't rob we off illegally. There are procedures in terms of attaining a PhD, even a master's. You can't just do it in one year. It's practically impossible. It's laughable. It's incredible. For full-time student, to all intent and purposes, it's three years. If they do your PhD in a three years for full-time student here. And if there are three years, if you know get hiccups with school fees, but you can extend it to five years for full-time, full-time or part-time student is between five to six, seven years, some even 10 years. Some they take 10 years for doing PhD. And for an institution like uh, Dominion University or any other university, a fake university, for give PhDs where you know get what we call supervisors, you need to get supervisor. As last speaker stated, um, it needs to be monitored. You get for present topics each week, like I did mine, to you supervise someone at this course. And it is your own, it is a learning, it's a new knowledge. Most knowledge when you bring up or get a PhD, you get for own and up. It is your own material, now your own paper, now your own knowledge, which is the new thing we they add to the educational system at the country or at the world. Which knowledge you bring up? So you go double down within one year, not even a master's. Master's you can do full time one year rigorously if you are effective, but you can do it for two years part time. Yeah. So it is shocking. And I have to say this, that they not only rob um, legitimate PhD holders, we don't do extensive academic research, but it is also, as you said to Borio, was an insult to the country and also the public in particular. Yeah. Why? Because any public office requires honesty and integrity. Mm -hmm. Any, and I repeat, any public office requires honesty and integrity. So if you are a public officer, you go obtain a bogus degree, forget promotion, then you have lost the public trust. You violated that public trust. And in that regard, for me, those people who are found culpable wanting to be asked to resign because it is untenable. That's my contribution. Thank you very much for your submission. Sweet Bonita, I want to come to you. Um, you just reject me, Dr. Um, we are about you just now. Anyway, waiting, um, Dr. Fuller and um, Honorable SOS just talk, I think see, they don't need lamb at the head. What's in your reaction to that and how you how you see the platform they, they build up right now? Well, to be honest, Commander Wankasu and Dr. Nathan Fula, I would like to say good evening to you and also our honorable experts. Because to be honest, if you have suffered for dumping, you will not just be wanting people to misuse or abuse, you understand. And for me, with this, it's an insult to everyone, as they mentioned. And, and uh, you just say that resign. You, you, you said support that? Then for me, then for me a shame. They will just resign from their top position and they will go acquire a fake degree. To, to be honest, if the head of them, which is mother, has always said he has a PhD, which he has not been able to defend and stop. So what do you expect the government to do? And this is the same man that was referring to the wife as uh, the vice president. So you can imagine when their ideas, or what would I say, their IQs are not even in sequence. It's not. That is the same man that was referring to mother's wife as the vice. So you can imagine where he got that from. So for me, like we have here, um, Usman is saying, oh, the SFP government, that man will treat and degree and celebrate for four years in governance. Then here again, um, he came around again and says, EU, we don't tell who say the salon police, then nothing. What's in 
my expects. Then here again, um, Ahmed, um, Adam again says the <laughs> the pricing class the class of 2022 Domino University. That's Waterloo underneath under the mango fruit. And then here we have um, Isaac Kaloku, that Dave and Agate Arut, they are watching with us. And then Agate did mention that also should be inviting people who have, have said to have very soon. We'll be doing that, which we have people to communicate with. We have here Hassan Jalo, because with all of this, people are really, 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 really upset. Because Abdullah Bla here again is saying a special greeting to his mentor. Dr. Fuller. So we can all see that this is one of the people that have we've known that they have suffered. And some of us were part of the graduations at the Oxford. So you don't go around and start making fun of a doctor when you know you have a birthday from a drama industry. It's okay. for me, it's a disrespect because people have suffered. People have really, really, really suffered to acquire those degrees. And you just, even if somebody gives it to you for free, you can watch yourself and say, I don't deserve it. No disrespect to you, but I don't think I deserve it. And one thing I've always said with this administration, they are not honest with themselves. They are not, they are not qualified to be in most of these positions. And these are the people that will be planting with people saying, no, I have a degree, I have a master's. We know now where they get their degrees and master's or their PhD from, it's around the corner. And we are proud of to say we were we were antics of Africa. And this is what is coming up. Like what will happen? People have suffered. And somebody was mentioning before saying Comrade just like, oh, what about those that have literally worked for their degrees? Then this is where you have to defend your qualification. If you work for it, I'm sure nobody can just take it away from you because you'll be able to defend it. Because we know people that work that do the PhD, they have to defend their thesis even before they are being approved. So if you cannot put the A and B together, my dear, it's not yours. And this man will not be able to defend even an undergraduate, but from what I've seen on his performance, from his time of being an IG to now. So he's definitely not one of us. And then here again, we have like, this is from Mustafa, kind of says, oh, we can assist for the four years they have been horribly, but <laughs> It is better to have the APC than the SFPP. So this again is just people saying, I don't think they brought this before. I think during the 2018 presentation, they were bringing Dr. Samura's qualification. And I think people started posting it like, they got his one from work. I'm sure there is no fraud issues there. So again, with this administration, we've seen the propaganda. Everything they are doing have been wrong and they continue to do it again. Okay. Um, can, I just, can I just add, we need evidence of this. If you log on Alfred Vinod Fuller on Google, me thesis them, they come up and me synopsis of me research. So then people are need for support the evidence by producing this thing at the internet because it's a simple way of verifying. And as rightly say, they should have had a viva, but did they have a viva to defend their PhDs? I no. guess not. So for me, Mr. Recommendation again is they should resign immediately to save the integrity of the institutions, both educational and public. Well, I, I understand say recently um, some of them don't begin to dissociate themselves from this um, sort of degree and all of that, and they don't begin to feel embarrassed or whatever, but they're not really the need for it. But anyways, um not just hang and so and then low come proper into we talk the when are the four um, uh, Mr. Kamara before you end um I just want Rob <laughs> but small on this. Okay. Um I just want to in less than one minute say yeah go when President Bill come na office they promise free and quality education. It's sad for today, for law we see, the free and quality education don't reduce to dominion university degrees. The unfortunate, these PhDs just don't show the quality where President Bill will talk about. Thank you very much.
Thank you, thank you very much. Indeed, it does show the quality when they talk about indeed. Like, now, all of this we they talk about today and um, <clears throat> the four years of this administration's misery. SLPP come to power with a manifesto that looks convincing, that looks like, say, within six months, the lives of Sierra Leoneans will be better than how been they for the past 11 years before 2018. And um, we see tangible developments that the country during the APC administ administration under the leadership of His Excellency Dr. Anis Baikroma. Well, after that 10 years, some people then feel, say, okay, well, enough of the goodness, because we are musicians in the talk, say, good don't do. Good do, not to work no more with the not to development with the eats. They come, they talk about bread and butter. They come, they talk about human capital development. They come, they talk about um, wastages and all of that. Well, then they can change the economy. We wage bill too high. Talk about wage bill. Talk about all sorts of things them. Well, then we get alternative. When you see somebody touch road, Look the load now the person here, the talk say, ah, that load day, easy for me. I can touch that one day with me one hand. Easy. But when they come, they can't touch the load now. Four years on, come for come. Waiting, waiting, they don't do. But before we go into them, I want to just look at a video where we form a president. Talk to me. You use some keywords in the day. Then keywords in the day, I want me to listen to them. Let we come into this topic here and discuss with four years, how see you don't improve from that four years day. And in fact, um, before going to the video, make we talk about the manifesto first anyway. The SLPP manifesto would then come, wouldn't win with, wouldn't come and say yes. This is the thing this will promise the people of Sierra Leone. Um, Honorable SOS, you're not MP. Yes. You follow, follow the, 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 the SLPP manifesto. You look at them, you analyze them, you look at the practical you know, realities that the ground. How does that manifest? Particularly the key things that we them promise with the human capital development. We have the free education where they roll out. The other promises we make about the bread and butter for turn out the economy, for lock the leakages and all of that. The wage bill will be too high. All of that, these are issues where they being come to the public where they tell we, um, the APC government for say, they don't make a woeful mistake on them one day. Then they can, can transform the country. Electricity and all of that. Water and all of that. So you talk to me about the key stuff in the day. What thing you can say, this party or this government don't do for the people of Sierra Leone inside these four years. Will they take, um, will they take yeah, out from I'm, political, will go to the economy? I don't say you 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 know the economic side you day mostly, but I'll take them from one sector for one part. Whether the whether the political or the economic, I give the, the freedom for choose which one you want to start with. Well, I'll start with the political aspect. Okay. Um, thank you very much. Um, uh, Mr. Kama and uh, Dr. Fuller, then Street Junita Awan. I really, really like for always joining on in that debate there. For the simple fact, say, they always give me the platform for do some clarifications. Uh, one of the reasons why some of us been left England and can't join Sierra Leone for practice politics and for changing narratives of that politics of lies, that politics way, they, they come, they give propaganda, they talk for just satisfy the people, but what's in there now you mind, and which you know say the reality is different, that politics there now we come for stop and for change. And the former president, Dr. Anes Baikuruma, he been go so far for ensure say, they change the narratives, that people they believe in politicians. They have to say all the gains, we, if you don't make politically, today, they don't go down the drain. It's really, really unfortunate. 
that we own current president, they say they don't even accomplish a manifesto, none of other things that they do for actually manifesto. <laughs> But they lead the Minister of Information, they say they don't do roads more than any other government. And we, the people, they know say it is not true. So we were the game where you try for, for like, put a, and we just do the attack for you. So the manifesto, all the things that we don't mention for the district wage bill, for, for, for bring bread and butter. The campaign slogan of the SLPP then, Tulungbo, no the Sidoya, angry Boku. It's sad that at this 2023 now, would they read Pamende one song where they say, You brother, now you brother, any IB, now you brother, you for vote for, I for support her. So then I tried now, then they use as a sentiment for buy the bitter people, because the people are hungry. Now, so you be say, now you come, the bread and butter we promise they never get it. Then you say back, say, you don't do roads, you don't work more than any other government. The people down the streets then will judge where 2023 can. But quite honestly, all the promises made, 80 to 90% of the promises made in the manifesto of the SLPP, I can categorically tell you now, without no hesitation, say, they don't fail this nation. So I want to feel this promises. I want only to quickly um, everything they that promises 80-90% do all of these with the They just can't endorse. Say again. I want only the you say 80-90% of waiting them promise now the manifesto and not come to reality. Yes. The bread and butter issue. Okay. The bread and butter issue. Now, the simplest thing where the presidential debates of 2018, the current president, Mada Bio, he make and clear say, then left rest at 60,000 euros. Today, now 200,000 euros. Okay. And the bread and butter issue. I think, say, the bandwidth don't begin to go low. Um, okay, well, let's go to Dr. Fuller quickly before SOSD come back in. I think say he don't get up there. Dr. Fuller, you yes. just need to wait in um, Honorable SOSB, they say just now. Um, look at it, you know, a human rights lawyer, I think. No, no, 500. Not quite sure. Um, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, hold on a minute, honorable. The bandwidth we don't go off. The bandwidth we don't go off. Yeah. Dr. Fuller. Yeah. Now, honorable SOS will talk about the bread and butter issue. Now they will be the start to talk about. We see this president go launch a bakery. Now, Wellington, the old government be did it. The people are public everywhere. They launch the bakery, actually turn the sword for build a bakery. We go, we go employ about 2,000 youth, them, I believe. From where in government starts to now, where the bakery and where the bread. Let's take on that. Well, me may call them um, abysmal failure on the part of um, <clears throat> the government, this present government. They make a lot of promises, a lot of proposals to the people of, to the people of Sierra Leone, but they fail we woefully. And for, for add to you, to you statement, reference to the bread bakery, now practical example, and it was promised the claim say the start time, I use the word claim because it not come into reality. Say it was started, but it not come into fusion. We haven't seen the bread. Um, we they promised we. Also, they did promise a state-of-the-art hospital 
for the people of the country that didn't materialize. Mm -hmm. They also promised, um, proposed, I will use the word, they claim for they proposed the construction of the Lungwe Bridge. Did it come to fusion? No, it didn't. And um, then talk about, we talk about bread and butter, where I want to pick up from Honorable Woody, they talk about where in a practical example at the country, the rice from 200,000, a bag of rice in the past government, it don't double. It don't, it don't even more than double. It's 500,000. That is 550 now for a bag of rice. And compare to the wage, the salary of workers, compare them. And I believe the least paid worker, I may be wrong, is paid 500,000 leons, some I think even 300,000 leons. So let me put that into context, into perspective. If you are paid 500,000 leons and a bag of rice is 500,000 leons, tell me how you able to feed the house. Mm. It is not possible. Now we left out. Now we come to traveling, transport. I've been getting for pay somebody for making come to free time for McKinney. It used to be thirty five thousand, and now guess what? It it don't triple. It's eighty thousand leons for transport for McKinney. It's mm -hmm. absolutely incredible. Then people are not the the salaries them they know they increase the salaries compared to the ministers and the ambassadors them, where then they increase their own salary. And the, and the, thank God my brother is here, SOS. Um, you guys are being elected to represent, not only represent, but to articulate on behalf of the community, the people. When I get for, thank God you're an economist, Mr. SOS, I'm not having to go at you. But fortunately, you're part of this discussion. Um, when I get for average and compare salaries of the lowest paid Nasalo, minimum wage, and compare a bag of rice and compare transport. If you guys, which I understand, the finance minister come to parliament, the well of parliament, and present salary increase for ministers. Why would I not go use una analysis, compare them to the lowest paid and the highest paid, and also the inflation rate in the country, rather than approving those salaries? So the MPs themselves that will bother us, they get themselves to be blamed in this regard. Because any salary where they increase, they know about it. It comes to parliament, because that's the procedure, and that's I assume is the procedure. So it's very important that the inflation for be commensurate, it will be proportionate with the salaries of workers. All right. If we're not proportionate, Dr. Then it's Fra a disaster. It's a yes. failure on the part of the government. Indeed. Um, you touched you touch some side where I really want for seize right now. Yes, and sir. show you a video where then tell me where they analyze the market. Um, where they juxtapose them with waiting people that they get um, as a salary. How okay. much the salary they live with them people a day? The minimum, minimum of waiting you they get from the market for your family. Let's just share that video quickly with me. Make you all understand what you just don't touch on. Very, very important. At 3,000, four cup rest, rest on at 3,000 for cup, not at 12,000. One cup of paper don't go 6,000. I buy 5,000 with some Marabandi auction when we said the canton. Uh, one pint per mine don't go 5,000. Six cube market at 500 for one and a 3,000. Three times you get about 1,000, you don't go um, three of them don't go 3,000. Plus that's not a 4,000 for time. Three times don't go 12,000. Fish, but not fish, you know, it's a kuta, I don't say that Spanish you eat, but now you don't have the people in the bonga that they eat. 20,000 euros for small size bonga. We put three sides together. Then you say um, onions, now 2,500 for one year pass. 
then transport for Gona Market and Canada, 10,000. They buy the plastic bag, 1,000 euros. They make them 82,500. What do they tell you? And they tell you, say, if you get a minimum wage of 600,000 euros, you will only be able to feed the family for like eight days. After eight days, the rest is not by God in mind. Do you understand? So, listen. You see, it's not indicators for sure this government don't fail by economy. You are not going to be answering the directly because everybody knows. I'm saying when they ask some question, they go round, round, round. Because the game big for that. Not to let's say you don't understand, but the position we defend itself now, as doing damage control, defending, waiting to himself. I don't say when I can wake up and money, she can have to do, and I'll glad. And we are made use for emulate. I know the man will be in the NGC, but the man now, he didn't have the, the decide for the defense. In fact, the other day I, I, I talked to him, I said he's now a, a mercenary, a political mercenary. Anybody can hire him for the damage because that is not a good thing. So, in other show say this government deserves more time. And they see the desperation, the spending spree. How are you going to explain to that poor man within a house, within the base of 100,000? Oh wait, look, if you calculate um for 30 days, it will give you two million four hundred and seventy-five thousand. How many several unions have been at this country and two million four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars a month? And this I'm talking about just for food, one time for the day. Can you imagine that? One time for the day. And our president will be able to tell me say they empathize, they feed the suffering of the people, they feel the negative impact on the economy of the people. Oh, they agree, they make donations of two billion millions to church for build church. He said, I knew whether they would buy in road to heaven. He donates 3,000 bags of cement, 20 tons of iron rod. Then he said, they donate 100 million back for Samoa and Tamara. They make mockery of the man. How that ordinary man, that policeman would work for 20 years, still not get one million or two hundred. Even for understand, say, President, they feel for her. The reason why he might not be able to answer the bread and butter issues. And it's painful. People are frustrated. Look at the situation now in the country. Now, drugs, kush, shramadon, ash. When I, when I talk with some of the young people, and what they tell me, the mm -hmm. stress, the bad impact of the economy, it makes them not choose for they take drugs every day for, as a means for reducing stress. Policeman even talked to me, he said, the emergence or the 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 the, the kush should not come. They reduce crime rate in the country because the people they take the kush and they know that they sleep. Look at the promiscuity of our girls, our young ladies. They depend on man to man for survival. If this government na Soriat government, if Jade Safa be mean serious with the issue of bread and butter issues, they promise to say in six months they're going for fix the bread and butter issues. Taking note of all the the, the, the the ramifications, taking note of all the, the way out them perceive the previous governments in managing the economy. But now, now four years or yesterday, we don't see the great president view. You know, in fact, let me use the proper word with a with a with a with a mom. It's not a celebration, probably a reflection for me in a salon. Four years of continuous suffering, hardship, poverty, backwardness. Okay, quickly, let, let me come to uh, um, just Ganawa, um, because why should we talk about Oh, uh, Asura Kinyeri, very, very painful, very, very painful. Sweet Bonita, what do you think? Very, very painful. When Doc was analyzing the transportation cost, and also when I watched this video, there is nothing wrong for more the gentleman because again it's only somebody that i can sorry for the word somebody that is ignorant so the situation of the people that will come and say those governments have done anything better for sierra leone as a whole because if you look to the comprador and the people of sierra leone are literally languishing every blessed day and you know the cost of rice when people are saying it's five hundred thousand. It depends on which one you are buying. That's the lowest quality, which is I think the cool joy or toy or something. That's the big one. That's the one everybody is trying to just survive. It's not like when you want to do. Let me get like um Jasmine 
or let me get the broken rice. That's not what it is. It's completely different. And for me, I'm seeing this every day. It's a disaster. It's a disaster. Because as we've all known, the price that they're paying people is not even up to rate. The man has said, you can only survive for eight days. That's just you buying food. He has not even included your transportation going back and forth. So after eight days, you, you have 31 days. How many days remaining? And at the end of the day, even at the end of the month, you still don't get paid. So it's only by the grace of God, people are surviving in Sierra Leone. And you know, like when we have from the forum here, uh, political Mufti was saying, um, this mango tree graduation, these people are doing, this is some of the things. And again here, Mohammed Kamran, I think this is um, the one, the gallo from Sweden says, so, oh, apparently the academic front says, it's just horrible. And these are people that have been educated in Sierra Leone. Some of us were not fortunate to go through the whole education process in Sierra Leone. So again, we are all right. But those that have gone through it, we can see they'll be really ashamed. Like he says, that's my university and this is what they're doing. It's bad. It's really, 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 really bad for Medo and Kessie. The situation, okay. the, the way people are living, is completely out the window right now. And this same administration will come out and say, we have done beyond what we said we would do. The man lies with distinction. That's why they are not afraid to buy PhD because they lie as they get those qualifications. Because if it's something, something that they have really worked for and they know they are not doing it, they have the sympathy of the people of the country that they are there to work for, they will not be doing this. And again, as the man was mentioning, he said, you've donated 300 your bags of cement, iron rods, and given a position that you are stressing for no reason, 100 million, and the people are dying for bread and butter. There is no food, you are not paying them. Yeah. It's a joke. It's a very okay. joke. A make a, make a, make a ask, um, um, honorable a question at the reach rate waiting. Um, Dr. Vinod Fuller just say to him, um, we ask, I think, say, we go. On and off, on and off, on and off. I just want to read this question again. As an MP member of parliament, um, Dr. Fula, the try for highlights some of the responsibilities of the members of parliament. Uh, so, what do they do as an alternative from waiting this government don't do? They don't promise so much things them. And this is thing back way um are they on social media i think say they go in and out in and out because of the network problem you're not going to forget this um message for now but anyway dr fuller please come quickly and look at these reactions from within um sweet bonita just tell me now just now about you know and then the video which you see just now where the guy they talk about you know the prices of the commodities then and then they go to the extent and talk about how much the person they get, the minimum wage, and the thing they last for eight days. And not only that, not only that, this government still had the man that they have delivered. They still had the man that things are fine, that develop in this country. People's lives are better and stuff like that. You know, and even the one where the spokesman where they can defend, even talk say, the person we've been respect for. And I possibly be say if they admire, maybe it will be the NGC, the guy with the top wear. But now it's like you don't become a mercenary, you know, where they just the hire for can for can defend the indefensible. So what do, what do you see in all this um thing where this guy don't analyze that so for we today? Well, it just supports um my analysis where I make earlier to say yeah. um the the minimum wage. Well, maybe say 500, thank God it says 600. But even with 600,000 loans per month, you can only live for eight days with that money for feed your people them. That is absolutely unacceptable. It is so unacceptable. This is the government where being rebuke the former president, the APC in governance, that um, things then go worst, and they use the word APC, no, they don't know, they don't know. 
But today, we get to be very practical. Today, it is the worst government ever in terms of um, improving the lives and conditions of people. Then they pay themselves one million times in terms of salaries. And the, the low, the minimum wage is 600,000. A bag of rice is 500,000. Or if you go buy, you know, by cup, where they say you go auction, you go quart, the quarter, it only lasts you up to eight days, even 10 days. Now let's ask the question. What about the, the remaining 20 or 22 days? What do you expect the people to do? Which then will eat those but that particular family. And I, I believe it's across the board. So people are suffering. Things are not improving. In my view, this is just my view. It appears that um, this present government cannot govern due to one sycophancy, as you just mentioned, somebody where they can't defend the indefensible. There are people, they see the truth. They refuse to say the truth. Instead, they are hypocrites and sycophants. And until we get people them way honest, even if you and me president or you and me minister, I walk under you, I should look straight into your face to say, this is wrong. We have to take this approach. But if anything, you have to just concur, swallow, lime, hook, and sinker, which the leader say, then it gets what we call a devastating effect to the populace yeah. and the country. Yeah, indeed. So it's the issue of sycophancy, dishonesty, and also ineptitude. The governance of this present government, government is absolutely inept. They cannot govern. Indeed. And me always they tell them, say, elephants load, not to begin load. Absolutely. So they need to reflect themselves and review, but I also come back, I wish Honorable is here, the MPs get a part to play to this, because when salaries are reviewed, they are tabled in parliament by the Minister of Finance, and it is for them to vet, compare the, the, the inflation rate, compare the salaries of the, the minimum wage, and also that of the ministers and ambassadors or parastators. They at least, the disparity not for be too great, but the disparity between the one way they up and the one way they down is so vast and it is absolutely not workable. It is not nice and it is unacceptable. So it's based on the bad governance of this government, but the MPs have a role to play you know, in this one. And I would like for hearing from my colleague, which part in the play from try for ameliorate this situation. Um, just a quick point. I think since um, Henry Bresser is not here, I remember the last time he was with us, what he said. This administration, even though they says they've come into parliament for debate on whatever they are doing there, they've already made up their mind. So when they get there, that man with the eyes, fish more, and the belly there, just says, oh, they said the eyes have it, and that's it. They don't even have the way to vote for it. They've made up their mind, they just come and then they sweep it. Oh, yeah, we went there, man. That's it. I think so. We don't get, yeah, we don't get honorable back. Um, I think they, the, the, the network, they get a lot of problems. They, you know, see light system right now. McKinney, we, oh, McKinney, Kenema, um, Freetown, doing the ABC government with we'll almost 24 hour lights. The confidence that if you light go off, yeah. Then yeah. You make it go off the lightning and make it quarter for 10 minutes. Then, so, okay, why should we wait for her? Let's just respond to Sweet Bonita. I agree with you entirely, but in my view, that is not democracy. That is dictatorial. Because if, if Mada, the claim say he's the father of democracy, then you should allow democracy to play. You should allow freedom of speech. You should allow demonstrations. You should allow the press for work freely. And I don't want to come on the human rights violations because a lot of cases But as a father of the mercy, you cannot do this thing. You go to parliament, you ask your minister, you go there, you say nay, and legislative organ, judiciary, and the executive 
in, in governance we call and separation of power, they have to be separated. But if they are not separated and they impose things, then that's not democracy. You cannot go and beat 10 parliamentarians, remove 10 parliamentarians, and it's called yourself father of democracy. And I don't want to go there yet. Okay, let me check with um, Honorable. Honorable, are you there? Just come live and say yes. Honorable SOS. I'm, yeah. I'm really sorry, I need to follow the debate. Yes. Uh, Aki, you understand? Of, uh, this yes, the network issue. But I'm um, waiting, um, um, Dr. and Sweet Bonita will really for talk about this now. Now that one of the MPs them, and we hear um, one or two people them the social media, they call Una where something can go wrong in the country and where government can get away with um, a lot of things them. Then they ask question, what in parliament they power? What in the parliament they do? Where we MP them? What in what in they do? What in they talk? Why do not say this? Why do not do that? Then they always they bash at Una, including the, 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 the leader of the opposition winner, Honorable Chari Koko. And um, sometimes we can hear yeah, the names them, you know, and they can wonder what thing would they do in the parliament when this government for four years they get away with things them we're not supposed to get away with. This is an opportunity for you to actually defend that um, going forward. May we self get for understand what and what really they go on and the public they listen to you, make you talk to me about yes. this issue. Uh... A bit of a problem with the network. Not to end when they get Africa. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. go ahead. Yes, I just to try for for draw inference. Uh, the democracy in England, for example, where they at grade A or grade A plus level, a different from the democracy within really Sierra Leone, where here. Probably you see now even great F with it because the the winners get it all. That's what it is now. Yeah. The winners get it all. So many a time, what do we get to do as an opposition? Hello. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, what do we get for do as an opposition? Now for raise the issues. And once we raise the issues, we left them to the eyes of the public, to the listening of the public, for make them make informed judgments. What I want to assure the people, the APC people, everybody will really listen to me now. The APC members of parliament, they're united and they always speak in one voice. There has never been any controversial issue in parliament where we get a division as a, as, as a party. We always they ensure say, we do the right thing and we speak in one voice. And Honorable Cherno Majuba, it's unfortunate that people don't understand how parliament operates. Parliament is a place of procedures and processes. If you don't understand those procedures and processes, you get the tendency for blame the leader of the opposition. Even with the MPC. And that's exactly the happen. But quite honestly, me, as far as I'm concerned, the opposition, the level where we don't try to articulate issues where they affect people, issues where they affect Sierra Leone, issues where they bring development to this country. The way we don't try to articulate those issues, the way we don't try to advise government, because sometimes we rule not to only for oppose them, but for also advise them, for show them the right way, the way we they go, but politics they come and override. And at the end of the day, what they then think now in that they do. So as a government or as an opposition, we always get real tools. One, not for participating in any debates where we don't do several times, or for workouts where we don't do that several times. But also, parliament is a place where they operate as a quorum. Whether we did it or not, if the quorum of parliament, they don't form that one for the, uh, uh, parliament sitting or members of parliament present, they can go ahead and pass any law. So sometimes we also look at it and say, it is better to stay in and make a voice out and let people know, say, we don't accept this. Take the example of this census. Now, a clear example, we see where the Honorable Chair Norman Juba, and everybody, all APC MPs, they go up the stage, the place become chaotic. Everybody, even the, even the police, they come, they spray, paper spray. Everybody opposed to the points, even the declaration. 
waiting at the table of the speaker. The chair, but what happened at the end of the day? This government still go ahead and do the census. They carry ahead the census. And today, they've been telling the people and say, the census is about development. The census is about the economy. It is not politically motivated. Now, neck up to two times, they don't mention, say, then we'll likely do boundary delimitations. Which data will then get for use? Now, this unpopular census way they don't do. So we, we, we ask the entire crew and the entire down in many times where we, they come for put the issues them forward. So if they ask me, if doctor they ask, Dr. Fuller they ask, what in the role we don't play? We don't do so much for articulate on the issues them with the border around good governance. Okay, um, which I want to ask you quickly. Um, yes. It look like for say one or two MPs them, then they resonate with the general public. The likes of um, AKK, the likes of Abdul Kabo, where they can come out and talk now a different platform them. What in the rest of the other MPs they can do? How much time they can spend in a week or in a month or in social media for tell the general public for say me um, SOS honorable SOS will are they against this or social and social thing because it look like when they talk about the MP then in the culture cocoa because it's like they need to see them on the social media for talk but they see Abdul Kabo if Abdul Kabo don't talk about a topic honorable Chai Koko need for Duam or honorable SOS need for go do the same thing or want to see all the MPs and go do them all over the social media that that will satisfy everybody because there's still this complaint even though your hands are tied, like we say the hands are tied, you are representatives. Um, some people they feel say when are afraid. Some people they feel say when are just there for collect the salaries or whatever it is. No, not at all. No, not at all, all of that. When are the comment and know what it gets and we want to let you address this. Why did they single out people like um A -A -A -K -K, Did they single out people like Abdul Kabu? They left people like you. Because me know what you they do not that yet. Me know what you they do not Makini. Me know how you I do resonate with people them. Now that would have the me know how they talk in the parliament. But why is it not enough for the public? Now I'm the Because the people and then they follow parliament. People and they follow the social media more. Indeed. And well, what we don't do now for of recent. Mm. Yes, what we don't do now of recent, because we get a platform when at the plenary, we don't decide, say, most of we debates now. We they make sure so we copy them and send them social media so that people in the area, waiting the leader of the opposition, they say, waiting honorable SOS, they say, waiting all other honorables that we participate in a particular debate, they say. That is what we are doing now. Absolutely good. But um, as, 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 as an individual or as SOS, you have people that are friendly to social media. They also get people that are not that too social media friendly. Mm -hmm. But um, as I say, we get a platform when at the plenary, the debate taking day. Or well, people them not can follow parliamentary debates, even when they can't on television. Of course, you know, go blame them because lights not in day. You understand? The mm -hmm. lights when they enjoy, like McKinney, for example, as I talk to you. So now we generate on day on so that I will be able to talk to her now. Wow. So uh, you imagine that. So even if you the you the, you the debates in the parliament, then get little or no opportunity for you to watch you on television for see what the member of parliament they do. So we don't decide, say, we PR system don't decide, say. Now, from now on going forward, we they ensure say most of the debates the way they do at the plenary, then for come at the social media so that people can get the opportunity for share. And the parliament also don't go where it is transformed to e-parliament, where you go able to log in any side where they it able to watch me live on, on Facebook and other uh, uh, social media outlets. So but definitely, definitely Abdul Kabo and Abdul and um, AKK, these are our younger brothers. They're very, very vociferous in parliament and they are doing very well. But as a parliament, we work as a team. We have we have the face of parliament. We come for, for radio discussions or other things. We have Abdul Kabo to be there to represent all uh, to represent the members of parliament of the APC. Because all of us know the goes to down at the studio for discuss issues on voting on the same matter. So this is why the only way we can do it going forward. This e parliament will try to introduce now where people are able to access free through the internet. They will be able to solve 
this issue of saying, we oh, just hear two members of parliament or three members of parliament. We know they hear the other members of parliament. So, yeah. I think, I think and so. and, and yeah, as yeah. even we last budget debates, it is, it is on social media. I, I'm sure you must have seen me even on the budget debates where we refer the last budget as a sort of a push budget. Yes. Because most of the things with really on paper, I know they reflect on the ground. Yeah. Indeed. Uh, I so guess, I guess, we I guess also I understand. We I also understand, you. say, with people that no use, they don't, they don't use to opposition. They don't use to this kind of governance. When an Eskuma been there, he been get an inclusive government. He been get national cohesion. So even if he didn't have the South, you know, they feel him. You know, they know something in our opposition party you've been voted for. But today, we have a situation where in, since where this government can't have power, me don't stand in the parliament, I don't talk not to one thing, not to two things. They plead on, the, the, on, the, uh, on behalf of the people of Makini to the uh, to excellency the presidency. This road will lead way to the regional hospital. If President Bio, you don't get nothing for Duna Makini, do you attend to this road for you? 30 days, this is not the first year, it not happen. But we don't see old Sewa Road where they start together with this Makama Road na Makini. They don't have from start to finish from the old road naya Prince William Street to the highway. They don't do them. We don't see other roads the way they don't do Nabu. And Makini still stay with day. The lights where the people have been get where they been enjoy. Now you know they some side and they wait and get today, some side and they know they get tomorrow. So all of this will go through them. So the only hope for people and get for this tough thing, but the people they want to vote for, the representatives. When are we? But sadly enough, whatever the issues. Okay. Right. All right. I believe, say, do, um, Dr. Fuller, you go agree or be satisfied. So we only hope, the honorable, by raising the issues, by articulating the things. Okay. Um, may go over to you, um, Dr. Fuller. Um, you go agree with um, waiting honorable SOS norm uh, submit so far, not so. Um, if you unmute yourself, please, um, because um, you talk about an e parliament, if not so, you call them e parliament, we all the deliberations then go day on social media and also. When Honorable Abdul Kabo, um, when I vibrant MP, don't go talk about an issue. There's no need for us to talk about that. But obviously, um, they will record all them deliberations them and then put on the social media because the population they on social media. Right now. The Alionians and they on social media right now. So what we need for do now for make everything where them we MP they do come on social media because we leaders and we don't always need to talk about that. So, um, what do you think about that one day, Mr. Dr. Fuller? If you unmute yourself, sir. Unmute yourself, sir. Unmute yourself, Dr. Fuller. Dr. Fuller, unmute yourself. Yes, sorry, sir, sorry, I didn't realize. Thank you, Mr. Kamara. It is a brilliant idea we are subscribed to. However, however, mm -hmm. when you look at the the country in terms of this is called an e-learning, even I will go with an e-learning, e-parliament, good, fantastic, is another podium, medium, platform, way of um, accessing, communicating to people. But is that going to be practically possible? And if it even is possible, how many audience do they cater for? Are we catering for the man waiting at the village? Or we are just catering for the educated elites, the few educated elites. Which other process then go use for make the man in the village? For me, I'm very concerned about the people by the village, the, the, the bottom approach, not the top, the bottom top approach. 
What about the villager? We how you go know the processes within the go on at the country? Because not to everybody will access e-learning in MP, parliament. MP meetings is there the constituencies that because most MPs that can go back to the constituencies over the weekend do they? Like, watch for the go and like you know, you know, mingle with them, with them constituents them, talk to them and any other issues with them get and updates, then you always do them to them, probably the executive and stuff like that. But the issue like so particularly we, with the so out, we are saying they, they do constituency surgeries like here. Yes, something like that. Because most MPs are required to go to their constituency over the weekend when they don't get parliament. Okay, if that is done, brilliant, because communication is very important. As I may say, I wish the general also there. They yeah. are not only there to represent, they are there to articulate the interest of the people there. So by and large, if you go represent somebody in a parliament or people in a parliament, your community, as you rightly mentioned, Mr. Kamara, it is incumbent upon you for make you go back, go explain, hold surgeries, hold yeah. meetings, then you go able to know what they go on with the people there. You get their interest them, their, their situations. But yeah. the e-parliament is also very important. In fact, it is too late as far as I'm concerned because other countries then get them. But it is, it is brilliant idea. I support it. We only hope it is going to work. But then we we'll also look at other platforms then, because we get the Salon Broadcasting um, Station. What are they doing? Yeah. Are they not playing their part? Because that now government channel, way for the broadcast government issues them. We parliament now part of government. You yeah. get AYV, although it's private. What what are all these channels, the medium of communications? What are they doing in terms of bringing? To people, informing people with regards to the development, you know, in the country and also what the parliament they do. Yeah. Because we need for no, so that we stop blaming them. Yeah. And yeah. that because they are elected positions and they are there to represent us. Yes. And adequately. Okay. Um, all right. Will they come closer with a video? But um, sweet bonita, I want to come to you quickly. May you talk to you about the platform, waiting people and think about it and stuff. Um, I will start first with Comrade um, Arun Pape says, uh, well, the people are right to think about the Trotman theory, which I mean, that's about the surgery, but again, we need to break it down because not everybody is elite to be able to understand some of these parts. So please, um, our waiting Dr. Arun Pape, let's come down, please. And also here we have um, from other mama who says, um, if we're aware, apparently, the Minister of Health had um, a meeting which they discussed five billion just on a five day trip for so like a conference. And when there are no gloves, people have not been paid in the hospitals. And this money has been used for nothing. Absolutely nothing. Wow. That is a lot of money. Yes. Yes. For five days. Yes. Yes. Now, in this habit of going to, um, some kind of um, what you call it conferences and um, workshop and all of this that's where they capture the money yes because one thing she says apparently this summit and i'm sorry in fact it's three days it's not five days forgive my mother it's three days summit three days yes three days and there are no gloves in connets the phmc and then also the district hospitals so why did they have to use the five Okay. <laughs> All right. Let me let me share this video uh, with us here. We Honorable Abdul Kabo, they talk about the wage bill, we SLPP they are complaining about, and we articulate himself well into them. Um, for tell we the from twenty um, eighteen to now, how much bill them bloat up to compared to the 10 years of the APC administration. What now, 3.9 trillion. We now the highest now the subdivision. The wage bill account for 2020 project, the wage bill account for 59% of the local revenue, namely the money we government together now the country. 50%, almost 60% of that of the local revenue. And ask yourself, what did they use the wage bill for? Why the wage bill go up? 
within the easy members say them no make commitment say them will reduce the wage bill we then can and will make the wage bill sustainable but what they do we increase the wage bill they form extra five new ministries you can you don't condemn wage bill why you perform more ministries when they expend more money they make sure say one the ministry of finance then get two deputies the ministry of social welfare children and gender then, then separate them into two ministries ministry of education then separate them Ministry of Lands and Environment and Separator, you know, then they create also the Ministry of Western, Western region. We have five extra ministries. All the ministries that you get for them budget reallocation. Quite apart from that, they create more uh, departments and agencies. Look what they do. They create the National Investment Board. They create the National Water Resources Management Initiative. They create the Wages and Salary Commission. They create the National Monitoring and Evaluation Department. They create the Strategic Advisory Group on Emergencies. They create also the Directorate of Science, Technology, and Innovation. They create the Independent Commission of Peace and National Cohesion. They create also the National Sport Authority. They create the National Council for Civic Education and Development. They create the Sierra Leone Seed Certification Agency. They create the National Disaster Management Agency. They create also new embassies then. Embassy in Egypt, and embassy in other countries. And even at the Ministry of Finance, they employ advisors then, the way that they give $5,000 every blessed month. They all the embassies, the way Salon and at the whole country, they send deputy ambassadors then. They so it go as it go, it go increase the wage bill. It make the wage bill where they they double and then they add on top and back. So now the wage bill law for 2020, 2020, when I the financial year old or end where they can project for the wage bill now 3.9 trillion with very unimaginable. But we ask them, they go put us in na teachers. So so this 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 now one see we get at the report on the budget and 2020 budget presentation or 2021 budget presentation now one way i've been attend we get debate from different civil societies and different stakeholders in the budget but now you don't mention different sectors in the budget ranging from the fiscal and monetary policy don't look at what you don't highlight the wage bill the minister of finance will be launched the 2021 budget discussion he agree or 2022 budget discussion be agree say yes the wage bill they up but this wage bill where they up the money where they spend now on teachers and also the money to go to agencies the more than create where then things are necessary for around the states assessing them states then state institutions that we then create which you go say about the significant and couple where they go to them first they don't look at teachers yeah um they say they employ five thousand new teachers yeah um most of them teachers and the way they employ up in codes they give them they receive salary but for the sake of argument, law assumes say they only receive salary. Five thousand teachers, and law assumes say they pay the work. That, and that five thousand teachers, we times five thousand by one million, na five billion. You times them by the entire year, we na twelve months. You know, na sixty billion. You times them by three years, na one hundred and eighty billion for teachers. One hundred and eighty billion for teachers. We are talking about the increment of two billion extra with the car at they meet 1.9 trillion they are two trillion so now it don't go 3.9 trillion so to me not to teachers then the, the law as you say the five thousand teachers then and the one million years they not even reach you know even reach uh two 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 hundred billion now one point eight one hundred eight billion for the for the for the for the entire three years now yeah and so apart, not to teachers then apart from the teachers then now we look at the non system they don't add it to the payroll of course you know not only did they begin add panel system to me at the cnc any existing structure within a car on a salary increment not to always don't they take place yeah so now the new institutions the way they come from new ministries departments and agencies the way they come from you know advisors then are various ministries the way they can take New embassies, the way they come from, deputy ambassadors, they are only ember. I wonder what it will be the work of the head of chances. Now, the embassies. Um, okay, honorable. Then, guys, here as they say, they come for come. One sec. Then, guys, here they say, they come for come. Block the leakages. 
and then they open a floodgates of new departments, new ministries, new embassies, and deputy, deputy, deputies them in various, various areas there. You know, um, we don't make the wage bill, uh, the, the, the wage bill don't double and it don't exceed even more. They go to even triple within the last administration we get. Well, what is your reaction to this one from what is the promise? SOS. On me, sir. You get me clear on SOS? You unmute yourself? Yes, I don't miss myself. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You're good, Yeah. Yeah, I read you clear. Um, okay. On the way to be. Um, quite honestly, now nah, it's shame to this current government because we people and they assess we said there's a mortal man in integrity. It starts from which you don't talk for stand by him, for stand by your words. Now in our integrity, now they it begin. But we don't find out, say, waiting the Honorable Abukabo highlights at that debate, that Democrats uh, 98.1. No lie, no day. day. The increase in the wage bill, not in all day, we cause an, as a result of the increase in ministries, departments, and agencies, coupled with the increase in embassies. And the simple reason for that is compensation, political compensation, for payback to with party stalwarts, we one way or the other we don't contribute to the success of the SLPP for Kamna governance. But some of the ministries there, we government can separate. Virtually, the other ministry will get little or nothing for do, like gender and the um, children's affairs, like the creation of the Ministry of Environment. We have the EPA, where we do the issue of environment. So if you will create a Ministry of Environment, then at the same time, you get an agency day. Now, what will happen? Then because the ministry not get much for do, then we'll take forestry now, then count under environment. Where the role of the ministry is supposed to be regulatory and forestry for supposed to be under agriculture, they don't take them from agriculture, they don't bring under the Ministry of Environment. Because the ministry virtually not get much for do. NPAA, the National Protection uh, uh, Area, the, the way they look after the forest. These self said they don't take an immediate under the Ministry of Agriculture. They don't take an, they don't count on the environment. All of that for can't get environment to work because they don't get job for do. They say now the only job of the Ministry of Agriculture now for plant rest. Can you imagine that? No side, no the all the forest, you know, they under the Ministry of Agriculture. So all of this now for compensate the political supporters. And sadly enough, even the increase in Republic debt, where today, if I tell you Amos will for pay, he will, he will cry for Sierra Leone. And then when they, when they collect them, when they receive these loans, now we parliament the ratifier. But upon the understanding, say they are meant for construction, for make roads, for make infrastructure, for build the economy, for get the foundation for the economy for growth. But who say go go? Most of them will go on traveling. Even the exchange rates, it don't increase as a result of we own activities of this government. Several officials are going out for conferences that will no matter. At the end of the day, to every conference you go, they go with Padiel. So you put pressure on the Leon because you need the foreign currency for attend those uh, 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 conferences where they bring little or no development to Sierra Leone. We don't see how many times this government don't travel in the name of attracting investors. Today, they will not see investors that will impact this country. Even the tapalapa, the bread, in fact, the way they promised me. So to today, say to today, we don't see it's not bread uh, uh, factory. 
functional. So why, what, what's the point? Why you did come now? You did use taxpayers' money. You travel, go this place, you go to that place in the name of attracting investors. And those investors are not coming. So what did happen? The Leon way meets at 7,500 Leons. Don't shoot up to 12,000 some hundred. So just the exchange rate on its own, it don't cause inflation to all goods and services in the country. And would that cause that? That as a result of the increase in traveling where they happen in the country by government officials. During the COVID, we observe, say, the Leon take a stable rate for a period of time, especially during the period of the COVID. It take a stable period time because officials we are not traveling abroad. The pressure on the exchange rates may be less. So we observe say, the value of the Leon will be stable at that time. But the sooner the boundaries they open, we begin to see government officials, they go out, then they travel, then they go there, Dubai, America, England, conferences. We see how fast and how rapid the, the rates don't go today. Um, so even, um, even, um, even, um, even in, yeah. a, in a bid, That's in a bid to cover up all this inflation will not take place. In the bid to cover up, then decide say, let us change the currency so that now that we are evaluating them from a 200,000 Leon's bag of rice to now 5,000 to now 500,000, they will now read 20 Leon's to 50 Leon's so that people then they forget. But the reality is the income of the people will also go down. The value, the, the value of the goods they wouldn't get, the prices of the goods they wouldn't get, it will also change. So we are not making any impact economically by even changing the currency. We just the, the raw pearl for Pepita. That is what exactly the change of the currency they also bring. So quite honestly, the, the SIPP government don't misdirect the economy of this nation. And whosoever we get for camp, when the APC get for camp over, for takeover, it get for be a very big challenge for fixed market economy to who say will be left out. All right, all right, thank you very much. Um, I want to come over to you, Dr. Fuller. Um, I want to let me watch this quickly, make we see what we, from our president, we say to we. President, I still have so many issues. Whatever I can do in the country, out of the country, in Africa, uh, we look forward to doing that. And this is a final question to wrap up the interview. And as you reflect on everything you've been through and your aspirations going forward, what advice, what thoughts do you have for you know other aspiring leaders, whether young or not, but aspiring leaders on the continent? What what kind of key message do you wish is taken from your leadership journey and your leadership experience that you hope to pass on to the next generation of leaders? Well, I will say that um, we have to be prepared for leadership in Africa. The expectations out there can only be achieved by a person that is larger than life. So you have to ensure that um, you prepared psychologically for it and um, um, with the changes that are taking place in Africa, we have to work on dialogue and to stay engaged. Leadership is about serving the people. It's not about lording over them. It's serving the people, giving them hope, providing a better life for them, making them relevant, and working together to them to transform the circumstances of your communities and Africa. It requires a lot than just mere campaign statements, 
opposition statements. When you're in the opposition, it's easy to make promises that within a given time, X, Y, Z will be achieved. But when the town is cast, you're there, and you realize the limitations of resources, the limitations not only of financial resources, but also of human resources, and the time frame you have to achieve the world that you have promised to achieve, and it becomes a very difficult matter. I will say that um, we less promises and live with the realities of less propaganda and be very practical in our approach. People will appreciate you when you come, when you're forthright. It's, it's a lot of effort. Even with certain difficulties, you will understand. But if you promise the world and you cannot even provide a glass of water, then it becomes very serious. So for leaders coming up, I think we have to know that uh, their missions for people to entrust their lives. It's a serious business. And we must leave it to the business that it deserves. Oh, on that note, thank you very much for joining us in the program, and we hope to have you back another time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. <clears throat> um, I pick up a few words them from this <laughs> from this um, interview. We our um, lend over to Dr. Fuller. The one way I pick up that, that did they make did they promise the world while they did in opposition, and um, that they cannot even deliver. Well, we from a president say <laughs> a glass of water. But me will say where well, they cannot even deliver a tapalapa bread for the people <laughs> of <Spain. laughs> So what do you say? <laughs> well, President Kurma just nailed it. He just nailed it. Um see policies or manifestos or promises is one thing, but actualizing them for make them come into action of reality is another thing. And that's President Gomani tried for summarize there. Yeah. He, he touched on one key area which uh, I want for reiterate. For he said leadership now for serve the people. Absolutely. For service, serving the people. You know, servant. For engage for dialogue for serve. dialogue yes all of those you know really that's serving, yeah. serving the people yeah. but more importantly he used that word where I like say transforming their situations circumstances oh, I watch them transforming circumstances people situations should be transformed meaning therefore change if you can't say they can't do this at least they foresee the reality the physical aspect of it. You yeah. could make a difference mm -hmm. in their lives. Mm -hmm. Try to make a difference in people's lives. But people being on, on opposition, including the APC and SLPP, I cannot exclude one party alone. It's easier to be in opposition to say, I'm going to do this. But when you are in power, then you're going to be implementer. And that's what happened with the present government. When they were in opposition, they were very vociferous. They mean very outspoken. They come with promises. Then within their manifestos, as you just rightly mentioned, to so say they're going to transform the country, they're going to change people's circumstances. But when they came to support um, my brother SOS, Honorable SOS, he increased the wage bill to 3.9 trillion, nearly 50 to 60 percent. Is that transforming the country by creating ministries, parastatals, embassies, 
just for make them able to support or compensate the cronies, them political cronies, them political sycophants, them. So that is not transforming society because it will get a knock on effect on the people and the country and the economy. And that's what is happening now. So, but President Kuma is right. Is this present government transforming the lives of people? The answer is a big no. Are they serving the people? The answer is a big no. We talk about Mr. Kamara engagement. They are not engaging. And I'll give you a practical example. When President, sorry, when, yes, President um, Bio took power, because they were in the minority in, in parliament, in the world of parliament, they introduced unfair and undemocratic means of removing 10 members of the APC party so they can gain majority. That is not transforming the life of people. That's not democracy. You beat parliamentarians at the well of parliament. That is toggly. That is auto authoritarian. That's not democracy. That's not transforming um, the lives of people. There. Because those people were, were, were fairly democratically elected to go represent the views of their constituencies and their people so that it would transform their lives. But you, you debar them, you, you, you withdraw, you pull them out of parliament, you remove them forcefully. That is not transforming the lives of people because those people believe on those, with those MPs that were elected for making them go help them, for making them change because they know those very MPs um, that people are where they savvy and that people are where they know and that they have trust in them. You're not transforming the lives of people, situations, circumstances of people. You come, you say you do, as you talk about bakery, you build bakery. You did not succeed in building that bakery, you don't come to reality. That is not transforming circumstances of people. You promise to do the Lunge Bridge. You not come to actuality, you not come to perspective. That is not transforming the circumstances of people. You are not serving the people. Come to human rights. You beat people then in Makeni, in Lunge, in Tombo, in Tonko Limba. Cross violation of human rights in the country is the highest ever since independence. That is not transforming the circumstances and situations of people. That is not serving the people. So in my view, in summary, this particular government in their fourth year is not only a dismal, abysmal failure, but they should not be voted for come 2023. Wonderful, wonderful, good submission. Now that's how we can do. In four years, we're coming to the end of this um, 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 discussion. Um, Honorable um, SOS, in four years, how would you give you assessment generally? Look at them um, from a political, economic, and um, aspect of them. Um, what is your assessment in a nutshell, just like how we don't so put on so far with just now? Um, I want it, I want to give a percentage. If I give a percentage, now true all over 10, now in a score. Okay. This two all over 10. Why I give them two over 10? Because at least so far, we able day as a nation, would they survive, would they go through whatever difficulty, but they still survive as a nation. That is why I give them two all over 10. But you know, in, 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 in the classroom, we you became two all over 10, now a big fail. Like a very big fail. They fail because this government just can't perfect the wrongs where they may claim say that they can correct. They do more than what anybody can imagine. Try it from the variables where they determine the growth of any economy, they fail all for control. They manipulate the inflation rates. They manipulate so many other variables. Even the GDP, when they claim, say, their projects have increased by 3.5% uh, come 2022, or it all slow down. These are all fabricated values, which statistics say alone, not, just, not, not even justified. 
I don't want to go into the details of the economics of farm. But well, always then they do, they just they rebase the, the GDP. And then at the end of the day, they come up with some things eh, with the expected growth of this. I did not be in the IMF, the old bank, this nation for don't collapse. Because waiting, these governments been calm and with them tell me say, then they on revenue mobilization. We not get for trust from the bank to pay. We not get for trust from central bank to pay salaries. Today, we don't realize say, they don't increase the domestic debt with them it. Far more than which the industry at the United can imagine. And those domestic debts, they go with high interest rates. So by so doing, even the resources, the money we get for use, for create social amenities for the people, in the use and arm for service the debts, either domestic or public debts. Quite recently, they even can a parliament, action aid and other organizations. They come say, then they ask for debt cancellation. We will not say no because it has to do with the good of the country. They will increase the fiscal space of government for borrow and bring development. But the question is, if this government is not going to continue for day, will they borrow for development? Or will they borrow only to pay with the wage bill because they don't increase them to a magnitude with the revenue that they collect, they will meet to that uh, wage bill? So you look at these governments in every shape and form, the bread and butter issue, they're not able to address them. And this has been the drunkard with governments where this, this, this government be used for convince the people of this country, say, if we can. The ordinary Sierra Leonean are not worried about the Benz way they use, the, 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 the Mercedes Benz way they use, or the, the Jeep or Wrangler, whatever they use. They don't worry about that. What do they worry about? It's not in daily bread. Once they don't go to bed hungry, they are fine. And the next day, they will do whatever they continue to do. But this is not forthcoming. And the people are bitter. The people are bitter because everything, everything in their lives don't change. Where Dr. Fulabi, they talk this, he talk about the transport. Free town, now, if you get picking where the eastern, where they go school now, maybe let's say central or maybe west, like Edwards or, or Gamma School, believe you me, if it take transport, it won't reach on time and come back, you know, we'll get nothing less than 30,000 euros just on transport. Imagine a poor person, he gets, he became very intelligent. He don't get the grade for going to grammar school or for going to Prince of Wales or St. Edwards, those good schools. Where now public schools, they're not ready for good. Day. Then he need for pay just on transport, 20 to 30. Because if they send the wait for the bus, that would be another story. The number of buses away they promise, 100 and something buses away they promise, since this few ones they come till today, no other bus not come. Me, where they talk so, we question on the procurement of those buses. Our rights, we call them, uh, 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 it invites the minister. I write a motion for let the minister come, the minister of finance, together with the minister of transport. For let can let I explain how them how they procure them bus the day, the cost of the bus and everything. Total today, me let alone the, 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 the speaker in office or the, the clerk in office. Nothing has been done about it. So on the whole, now like play play no more the, 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 this government banker. Play play or just to me to you football, that both that both you open the play. Why do you give me? Why do you give me? Now in the afternoon. If you know to power, even if you are SIPP, you will not benefit. So now only 5%, or maybe even less than 5% of the supporters of the SIPP, forget about the general masses, that they benefit from this government. And governments, no day for only free people, a day for some, the people of a nation. In this case, the 7 million people of Sierra Leone fulfill the good, the impact of 
the policies we governments they make. But our people are disappointed. They are very much better. And I am sure come 2023, June, this government will left power and the APC, they take over and try for correct the wrongs of this Thank government. You very much. Thank you for the submission, Honorable SOS. Sweet Bonita, I want to come to you. You don't listen to this very sad state of affairs where we too eloquent um, just the dumb express Nayasu, talk about the issue of economy particularly, and then touch briefly on the issue of human rights and the kind of way where the government don't bastardize the constitution, and then they follow protocols, and then they follow procedures, and they summon people in the parliament for your answer to questions of the promises they wouldn't make. You know, they respond, they need to come to parliament and then just they flout the system. And then people are so, when they can be there, when they can bash at all the time, um, then get, they get their own mandate, they get their own role within the play as parliamentarians, they're lawmakers. They make the laws, they're in opposition, then they put out the issue, they talk about the issue. But when nothing is done about it, then the system don't become a dictatorial system. Not a democracy anymore. Because if you as an MP, a senior, I would say, were responsible for make laws, the parliament, you write a letter, send them to the clerk. The clerk at least let like, reply to you, tell you, say, I don't contact that Monday. Now, X, Y, Z, now you say. But when you write a letter and they request to the clerk or request to the um, speaker for make something, let the action something, we're beneficial for the country. But if people are so they ignore all of this. We are four years on. Still, we don't get anything better when they happen in the country. The people in the suffer. We students there when they talk about when they talk about quality education. We don't see quality in the we don't see nothing. We see the degree under um, mango trees and stuff like that. What an insult. But I believe say we comment and we audience there when they watch this program when they listen. Don't say a lot on the platform right now. And um, let us have way into this. You know, debate here, so make them tell me what you what they say to me. What they say? What's not a reaction to all of this? Well, uh, from here we have Jonathan Salomon who said, Well, the real government failed because they never aspired to succeed. Their main objective was only to tap with ABC and the government, nothing more, as part of the powerful party. But this is what I want people to stop doing. I don't care if they are powerful, it is a it says SMP. I don't care which slogan who comes in who is up. Because I remember our honorable saying, Oh, even if the SMP are saying just because we are not for us, that's not our business. We are Cerulean and they were there as SMP. So if they have failed us, as long as you are SMP, you are part of it. As long as you are part of this administration, you are part of them. But we are not gonna differentiate how part of the no, we should stop that. Because that's one of the excuses they end up saying it wasn't us, it was them. That's not my business. It was your flagship, it was your party, and that's what happened. And to be honest, when we look at the SFPP, from start to finish, some of us, for me, mostly I refer people to my personal page. I have said, the year was not good for the country. And it's still there, and it has proved me right. Some of us are not too clear, but we see things far, and then we say it. I said it from the beginning when people were campaigning, I was like, it was not fit for purpose. And 2019, I did say, I know you are not capable of doing this, resign. He did not. And people are saying, oh, so full as you resign. Somebody was saying he was destroying the English, the Queen's English. The man can articulate himself, he turned him to IT to do what? For me, all of this is just tribal thing. It's not about who can speak English or not. Some people will not speak English, but at least they will be able to do things that are good for us as a nation. For me, I don't care about people speaking eloquent English or whatever. No, no, no. The man is not competent enough. We all know him being there, there was somebody that was, but because of his tribe or whoever, whatever he has done, they decided to put him there. So this is why we are struggling. Mother, first of all, was not supposed to be there, but he finds his way to whatever he's going to do. This is why we are suffering. Because for me, I've always said, if it was an SRPP that was there, then
then we would have had a better Syria deal, but they did to do whatever they wanted to do. This is why we are where we are. So I'm sure the people of Sierra Leone want something better for themselves. And we also that are in the diaspora want something better for Sierra Leone. So we we'll walk towards that and make sure 2023, this particular administration are not in governance. Because if we don't do that from another one, because we will suffer. For us, that means in the diaspora, because you can't see, for example, my mom lives in Africa. She can't afford to buy a rice. I'm gonna say I'm not gonna feed you. No, I will have to do it. It doesn't mean because she will still call herself to go and vote for SPP. But I'm telling that you will die if you do that for the second time. If SPP is in governance, you're gonna die because I will not be afforded to do all of that. But this is the mentality you have people that will come around and say, Oh, ABC do ABC do that. But what is the benefit you have got with this administration? There's absolutely nothing. You try to educate them and they be like, oh, but that's what you say. And again, when um, Honorable SOS was saying they are now doing this e um, parliament, for me, it would be nice if we can also be able to have your audio and share it on WhatsApp. Because to be honest, people listen more of WhatsApp than any other thing again. Because it's really, really frustrating. After you have one information, you share, you're sharing it with people, they will tell you, oh, but it's what you say. No, it's what the truth is. It's in black and white. What those ones are telling you are all lies. I think two days ago, they said apparently, um, is it like a uh, helicopter that landed in Kenema? You can see people literally rounding the field to look at it. It's like, it's something so amazing. For me, I'm looking at, this is something that I've been there all this while. It has not happened for a very long time because there have never been anything. And I just want the people of Sierra Leone to think for the betterment of Sierra Leone. And I think the only way forward for Sierra Leone is to name. There is no other way. There is absolutely no other way because with this administration, some of us, if he's there, it's not going to work. And again, he has proved us. I was hoping that they would have done better for me to come back and say, I'm sorry. What I said, I was wrong. But that's not what it is. They just proved me right. And you know, people are saying, oh, you're pushing them to fail. I never wish them to fail because they fail. We fail as a nation. Because at the end of the day, when you look at the the GDP of Sierra Leone, it's going to be on internet. And that's my country. It's looking that bad, except when it comes down to education. I'm not going to be ashamed to say I'm not Sierra Leone and I'm a proud Sierra Leone, but I'm not part of that scam. I'm not part of that activity. But again, my country name and reputation is going down because you had some people that are not supposed to be in offices that are not meant for them. This is why we are struggling. You know? This is why we okay. are struggling. No problem. Change that. Um, Dr. Fuller, yeah. um, you listen to Honorable SOS. We conclude um, with the words saying that come 2023, SLPP Kimura Power UPC replace SLPP. We form a president, chairman and leader, um, His Excellency Dr. Anes Baikromasi. Make we not promise the people them we do clean power, we are not able to provide a glass of water. Um, come 2023, APC win. There's a huge hole to cover. The wage bill don't triple. And still, these governments are very adamant, very, very adamant, at least at four years in governance, admit, say, yes, something don't go wrong. We will not do, we will not do, or we will not do things right. We don't fail the people them. Four years on. But there are people within this government who are so very adamant that they have done good for the people of Sierra Leone. Even though realistically we they see the damages that really happen right in front of your face. But you get them people as a way they continue for seats now the public domains, the social media, the 98.1, they, they articulate they talk about how successful these governments don't be. It's so hurtful for some of you all they listen to them TSO. You know, um it's difficult. Are we the next government or the next president be able to transform the way we president say, where you want to be a leader, 
you don't forget that chance for able to engage the people then, for transform their life, for provide for them, for, for dialogue, for bring and cohesion. Also, they bring all their words that they put them all together for make the next leadership. Make the aware say it is not just about winning. It's about working. You are a slave for the people. You're not there to go bluff on the people them. You the bluff with the people them where you don't succeed. This is very, very important. How APC governments come 2023 will able to cover them all day or so and make Sierra Leoneans them feel say yes, we country don't begin to move forward now with all these big massive wage bill will get. Well, thank you, Mr. Kamara. To be honest with you, it is a daunting Herculean task. We we'll therefore be very fair. By God in power, we believe say with God in grace and the prayers we pray and APC will kind of power next come 2023. But for me, that's not the issue. The issue, as you mentioned, are the challenges, the political, the economic challenges them, where they get for can face a huge, they are really huge. And President Koroma said it's right. We should not make fake promises, as alluded to by the SLPP in the past, who for speak the reality. For me, if the next government, whether some of us are there, and I hope Owen Kasui and Bonita, then good members will now because now they play a very great part, fantastic you know, role in promoting the party and the country. I hope say it will be included in the next government. But whether we are there or not, we should not relent in reminding them that look, this was what the SLPP was doing. We cried them down. You should do something for make a difference, for transform the country. And if you ask me, the only way we could start them is by making sure we empower the youth, youth empowerment and women empowerment. They develop a country. We talk about human development capital is very important. Let's look at the human development, the human capital, youth and women empowerment. If we able to create jobs, look at agriculture, you repatriate, you take all of the youths who are languishing, idling in Freetown to the provinces where they can be employed. Believe me, they will be productive. And you know they help, you know they only help employment um, maximization, but it also, Mr. SOS he says an economist, it will boost the maximization of the income. It could generate income for the for the country. Because where agriculture, if we concentrate just on agriculture alone, no can promise I'm going to give free education, I'm going to do agriculture. You cannot do it, to be honest, within four years. Just two policies then, we will create employment for youth and the country. Then you will say, we could say, yes, APC can do it. But let's don't promise, come with a lot of policy step. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do technology. I'm going to do education. We're going to do, no, we cannot. Looking at this wage bill, we don't raise so high and fulfill that gap day. I tell you what, now only God get for help we. Indeed. Only. Indeed. Honorable SOS, you don't listen to um Dr. Pinot Fuller, which is he touched on some areas them. You now a seasoned politician now, a well-seasoned politician, well experienced. Um, you, of course, you don't see the accurate heights where we go for climb, the uphill task where we go for where we go for climb. For able for level the ground, the storms they will go for go over for able for level ground for the people of Sierra Leone. Now when we're in opposition, it's easy for me for talk as they can say. Like we, um, Doctor, they say, um, former president actually nail up on the wall for say yes on the head say yes. We not for make promises them just like that because we're in opposition. Be careful what you say. 
SLPP make all sorts of promises to them, which we see today, like a today, even within themselves, the only regrets within the go put in the Some of them will begin to take exit strategies them right now. Because I begin I've seen our social media where they, where they don't begin to get a passport them for the picking and defend visa for them. They don't get a visa for them. I see passports them. Where they don't find visa for their family them. Then they left the country. So nine minutes now, they said they for escape. They go for left the country in disarray. As a pol as a as a politician, a well seasoned politician, honorable SOS, your last few words. What sort of policy will able to liberate Sierra Leone? From this bonding in the, in the first place, the choice of our party in the flat bearer will go a long way for answer to the question where you ask to. We forget a flat bearer, we get experience. We don't serve in various capacities, in various ministries. We understand the ins and outs of the economy. We we'll get on as a flat bearer and eventually it win. Then at the beginning of the solution of this problem we've already talked about. All is not lost. Dr. Fuller explained, I'm saying that God only get for help. We agree. Well, I believe say so one way we got to go help for us now the choice of the flag bearer we will get. We forget a flag bearer, we not only a politician, but also a technocrat, we understand the issues and how to address them. And it gets a correct team without sentiment, devoid of political affiliation or support. It gets the correct team around them. Believe you me, Sierra Leone, the economy can turn around in less than three years. I can assure you. But it all boils down to the leadership. If the leadership determines, is ready for work, and ready for follow up issues, because it is not only about appointing this man as Minister of Education, but also forget the time as you as the president for monitor and study and look into that ministry if the man is actually performing. Rather than depending on the information where they can give, then you use them for analyze or say to the public. At the end of the day, it is fail. It, one of the reasons where President Kuma succeed to this length, now because before he became president, he was once a parliamentarian. And in parliament, he did get a mirror of all the economic activities with the Apuna the country. So when you take over office, he didn't know exactly what the Apuna education, he didn't know exactly what the Apuna na, na Minister of Finance, and you can monitor. And the minister said, no, say, you know, Say, you know what's in the happen, and you know, say, what thing they can present to you, so you're wrong. But when you don't know, it becomes difficult to govern. And I think that is the main problem where this government will suffer from. Hmm. It, yes, that the major issue when they suffer. Because so many people are waiting in governance, they don't understand how for run a country, they lead way to a path where today, we don't see most Sierra as I mentioned, don't regret for what this government inside. Oh. And sadly, sadly, in Europe or in England, where country they suffer, government to do something about it for me, just the sufferness, the suffering of the people. Government to do something. Mm -hmm. But in this case, government is doing nothing. Look the petrol formula. What is going to government? The percentage, the amount of money where they go to government. For God's sake, if the dealer is getting 8,000 and you, the government, they get 7,000, why can't you say, okay, let me get 5,000 or let me get 3,000? Then the 4,000 go for reduce the suffering of the people. That is just one example you can do as a government. Then you find other options. You know, Dr. Vinod Fuller mentioned by agriculture. It is the hope of this nation. Productivity. If we produce, if we embark on productivity, sustainable productivity, viable productivity, for sure will change the nation. 
will change the economy. But once you not do production, we highly depend on imports. With the, with the Canada exchange rate through the face, believe you me, we will continue for cry as a country. But I am sure if we have a leadership, we understand which are the same. We are ready for go now the ground. That we President Kuma be determined for let the light scan of this country. He himself, the visit in Abumuna, several times to ensure the Abumuna is completed, and then we get electricity as quick as possible. And it happened. So it is about how determined. If you can have the seats of power, that hot seat, and you relax, you enjoy, then you will not deliver. But if you walk, you will see the gray hair, the calm, and you will see the wrinkles, the turn at the face. That is to show, say, yes, indeed, you will be having sleepless nights for ensuring say, the economy or the country move forward. This is what is lacking in this current administration. And for that reason, I am sure, I want to repeat and date, I am sure the people have already made up their minds. The unions are ready. They are just waiting for that day, June, for men they're ready for work, cast their votes and get this government out of power. They are tired and fed up with the suffering. And for sure, they will ask this government out and the APC will take over the realms of power and deliver this nation once more. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Honorable SOS, for the time when you take for country in Minayaso. We really appreciate from this platform. I see myself agree with you and I see on um, um, Sweet Bonita Seth, they agree with you. And um, I think they get a question to ask from the comment from them. Sweet Bonita, ask the question. Uh, we we'll got to the country really close of this. Um, oh, yeah. no, it was just for our viewers to ask a question. This is from Hassan Pencil. It says, well, um, the SFPB government, apparently, they are being scared of criticism from an Ade buyer because we remember about, I think it was on Friday, that Fisher was refusing to make judgments saying because Ade buyer is something, and which that particular gentleman is not part of ABC, and I think there was a press release on that. Then again, what he wrote here again, we have um, this, this person is the, she's, or the person is the Royal Diamond Queen. He says, take it for today, it's the certain government that have always blamed it's a blaming game from the past government and non focus on the people. So this is the issue where we have with this administration. They came in with propaganda and nothing they have done in four years. You know, people were asking of agriculture and stuff. I think 98 point for one of the questions they were asking and um, Toma was about the Tomoba agriculture rice production. It was like, oh, we've done 20 to which there was nothing for him to expect. He's just going, taking us to one Asian country coming back up. Where is the rice? Oh, people are not eating the rice. If the rice is there, we will eat it because that's what most people want to have. It's not just imported rice. Oh, no, people want to imported rice. That's not true. The rice that you're talking about, it's not there. But again, they just have ways of finding ways to make excuses, which it's never there. It's never there. And the truth, everything, again, if we are going to talk about it, we bring it to the public and then we have it on audios because not everyone has access to um, Facebook or Twitter and stuff, but if we have them on audios, this is where people will hear far and wide because this administration, they came in, they have no idea, they have not been in governance, all they wanted was, all they were doing was propaganda, so everything they've done has not been to what they were supposed to do because they don't know what to do. And they don't want to accept it. And if you don't accept it, then you can't learn. If you don't know something you ask, then you learn from it. They didn't. This is okay. why we are so important. Right. Um, you see, we almost don't talk inside with time, but this platform can always try to discuss things that we're not trendy stuff then. So because this is a trendy stuff, things that we don't we apparent at the moment, we everybody they talk about. I think say it would be a disservice for we for make we know get a word from we guess them and also about this issue where they happen. We get we um we case the APC case then our court. We been presided by um honorable justice Adrian Fisher. 
This case don't go on, they don't drag we, drag we, drag we for almost two years into this case or more. We don't come almost to the end of our. Well, the constitution don't become a law. We'll be the expect say Adrian Fisher go pass in final verdict for let we move on as a political party. Now we are the biggest political party in this country. Rightfully, Asan Manso asked the question at the right time to make this be the last few words then for this um, discussion. Adrian Fisher, now a professional according to which we understand. And if we don't deal with this case all along, this is the time where Adrian Fisher forgive a verdict. It come up and tell me, say, it threatened, say, in the pull out of this case. Somebody will not conclude, they almost conclude the case. Now, can give verdict. The whole of Sierra Leone and the diaspora, they wait for this verdict. It can't tell me, say, in one pulling and for this case as a professional, quote unquote. Huh? And then something went all related to the case. Something we're not related at all to the case. We're not mamikos from somebody we're not an activist who we all sabi na social media as Adibayo. That man that the guts for play Adibayo in video in, in audio na courts and point finger at the Secretary General of the opposition winner, Honorable Dr. Alaji Ambassador. Usman Fode Yansane. Tell us, say, it's either um, Dr. Yansane, the give Ali by all the give and favors, or it be say, Ali by all kind of respect and too much. Or make Ali by all not even the mention name or cost in your mama. So for that reason, he will pull out of the case. We hand them over. But in the talk to Dansane or instruct them or tell them or make it go tell Adebayo or make Adebayo either can apologize or stop for cost in mama. Right. Well, Adebayo don't apologize. Adebayo don't apologize. You don't respond, you don't apologize. We all know the apologies with it. So I want to give the chance in few words. But we come up with an own reaction to what you want to see. I want to go first of all to <laughs> to um, honorable SS. That means not the ground. <laughs> um, thank you very much. In brief, as a lawmaker and as somebody who understand the law, we not allow for comments on issues where they in front of any courts. We don't allow for comment on that. But for sake of this purpose, I just want to say these few words. The APC the institution, since 1968, they don't do an operation onto the state any good day till the end of the world. No single individual, nobody, no go able kill the APC. No matter how powerful you did, whether you are a judge or you are a president or what have you, there is nothing you can do for stop the APC from existing because now only through APC this country will develop. There is no truth about it. On the issue of Adebayo, for send any apology to the current judge, I am sure the APC as an institution would don't look into that matter because before the judgment of asking for the we own respectable Secretary General for call on Adebayo for saying an apology, already the party don't make a press release say they don't know this Adebayo and it's not a member of the APC. I think that do enough for make the party, for make the judge understand say the matter we did before the APC for now is for me to go down 
to the people and begin form the structures for prepare for police government that power come 2023. It is not about Adebayo. It is not about any other individual, but rather the focus is we get a focus for get this constitution done and go down to the people and begin form the structures and then we go to action and get this government out. So if anybody wants time for that, trust me, you can delay that, but you will not be able to destroy the APC. Okay. Nothing, nobody can do that. I see. Okay. Um, over to you, Dr. Fuller. Um, you don't see this as an indictment or a way of connecting um, Honorable um, Usman Fuller Yassane to this Adebayo issue? just for kind of like try for you or really truly like um an order from above basically for say well no matter what you do do um, the best way you can may you make sure say this case yes so you don't pass verdict on this case yes so on me to self sir on me to self on me to self Kamara, you said it all um me no go call and say order from above because um, Justice Fisher, he is a learned man, he's a lawyer like me, and uh, he's educated, he's experienced. And I will be harsh this time for Georgia for say, I will use this word, he has gone overboard. He has gone overboard. If I was him, or if I were him, I don't for take this approach. As Honorable SAS just alluded to, Adebayo, na individual entity, is an individual, a separate entity, divorced of APC. And ISEF don't attest to it. He don't confirm that. He's not APC party card holder. Implicitly, not a member of the APC, but that's the type for say. So you associating Adebayo in recording to being an APC and indicting the sex general is untenable, it's unacceptable. And it's unprofessional, you know, as a lawyer. And I think he has gone overboard. Well, he's lucky Adebayo don't, don't apologize. But if I was um, um, sex general of the APC, I, I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I wouldn't have. Seriously, I wouldn't have done that. I know what oh, tell Fula, anybody. Dr. Fuller, the sarcasm I use. I know, I know. That's the comment I make. You know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but I wouldn't have just time for emphasize the unprofessionalism way George Fisher do. Indeed, indeed. I know go, I know go do one because you know, George, how you go determine, say, okay, let's say Payasane go tell anybody else to um go apologize. Suppose somebody has go get more information, not to any Payansane, then you are incriminating Payansane yes. into this context. Absolutely, absolutely. You are incriminating him because he will take liability for any other audio where they come out. Yes, absolutely. So it, the reasoning he based it on is not wise. That I would absolutely. say. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what we That's what we all see him because uh, we really think um, beyond, you know, from outside the box, we just think, say, Adrian Fisher, I think, say, the don't try for waste the party in time from PPRC. They, PPRC don't finally give up, say, no waiting, let will give them. And finally, they don't give them now. Now they don't bend now on the court now for let Adrian Fisher continue for time for them. But let them say, like we're honorable, just to say, to we are a very big party. And we don't in operation from the 60s. Nothing and nobody will be able for stifle progress as a political party. And let alone feel say when they continue for behave so, that means say we're not in order. Believe me, if the next week at the election, we get flagged by that today with the win that election day when the term reach. So we may them continue for play the game so that they play. If Edgar Fisher look at your professionalism, buy them, sell them, auction them, the cheap one for or delay APC, then you know, say, now the most biggest mistake you make in your life. If you don't begin to get small accolades, then in these recent times, because you want, you, 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 you pretend that you can speed up the case. 
But trust me, what you see so from what you say for connection to way completely, you know, detach from this case or to have a dragon inside this case for let it stifle with progress as a political party. The clear, clear sign for say yes. Then people also no one follow move forward as a nation. It's not only stifling um, um, APC or whatever, that the nation, the in, entire country, that it is trying to put BN back. Single handedly, in and in, you are with the instructor. That's what me, part, me, me particularly, that's what me think. I just want to make we, you know, uh, sweet bonita wrap them up for we quick and then, you know. Yeah, but To be honest, I listened to Adibayo in audio today. Where he released today, five minutes into the audio, I had to cut it off. I had to stop it. <laughs> so, when I want to listen to the apologies of Adibayo, make you listen to that today. <laughs> Anyways, I want to say a big thank you to all the viewers. Then, the one who make the comments on the platform. Plenty, plenty, thank you. This time, because this is now Ramadan and people have taken their time out, and I let you as well take their time out. And also, the Palm Sunday, we will take time out to give this platform to support you and make comments. I want to say a big thank you to them on behalf of the um, APC online TV platform. And I also want to say a big one to Honorable SOS. As much as we have um, a lot of constraints. Uh, the ground inside the uh, McKinney, uh, the blackouts now, the tension now, the threatening now, all the kinds of the day, the network issue now, but he's able to join me and be part of this conversation and this discussion. And he actually, don't tell me what thing that they do as parliamentarians now for make sure, say, the message and the sentiment that they get, they come out to we, you know, the grassroots. Because a lot of people that are in social media can bash at the parliamentarians, they're voting in it. And they're looking to understand the, 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 the scope where the parliamentarians can go for rich acts. You know, just like I talked to you know, just now, if he was not a parliamentarian, he, was, he would be free enough to say, to speak up and say well, in your opinion about this issue as well as can just now. But because of he gets integrity, gets in a professional, he know what in a scope, he gets a limit at which it is discussed the topic here. So on platforms. So we get for give them that chance day. Say yes, as parliamentarians, they're senior citizens, they have integrity and they are lawmakers, then get for them to be, you know, keeping to the law, stay staying within the confines of the law. Uh, MP, we're not going to expect an MP for go break the law, you know, because that they make the laws. So it will be difficult it's just unfair where they are on social media, where they really go at them, bash at them. But equally so, that, that continue with myself, you understand the other people then, because they kind of they feel, say, you know, the frustration at which they see they happen. Now, Sierra Leone, the frustration is quite, quite difficult for certain people to handle. And when they are on the social media, so man can vent the anger and bash at everybody, you know, including your own political uh, operat operatives there. But nevertheless, while on the camera platform they're like this, they talk to we that the diaspora, we they sort of understand this is how they come out from. We they sort of for you know resonate with you and understand say yes, that difficult situation. Your hands are tied, they don't remove 10 members of parliaments, but they're gonna become minority that the that the, that the, that the parliament, but then it gets the way out. Like you said, the winners takes all. You know, always they get chance. Whenever then the winners they want for 
pass from the parliament, they, they go at all costs to make the make sure they pass up, whether una good against them or una frown against them or not, whether it's good for the country or not, then they get at waiting the one for get at. We don't see that from the beginning to now. And it's what they want to have to achieve, they don't achieve. Yes, we don't do quite a lot of things then for stop certain major, major things and for them to happen in the country. Kudos to una, and we really appreciate you now. One for encouraging our liquid Dr. Fuller say, we're not going to continue for engage social media. We're going to continue for engage on our constituents them. We're not going to do MP surgeries them. We're not call meetings them. We're not using our executive, we're not call meetings them and talk to them and say, now this and this happened last week in our, in our, in our parliament. Now like this and this we, we agree with, now like this and this we not agree with. Now wait and see what we agree on. So these are all the things I feel say the people of Sierra Leone want to see going forward for, for the elections in 2020. So I want to tell you, thank you, Honorable SOS, and I hope say, you go turn me again next time when we call on you, and you've always been there with yourself available for you. Tell you, thank you. Um, to you, Mr. Uh, Dr. Fuller, we understand the, 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 the insult. We understand, say, you for be upset at the insult because you went through some stringent academic discipline for able to acquire your degree as a doctor. PhD older, and not to an honorary thing. You went through the academic disciplines. You stuck behind the, the, the computer for, for, for weeks, months, and years. You know, you, you sat on, on top of books inside the library and read books for years for able to acquire this. It's an insult for somebody to go pay money or let them just go get inside two weeks, go get a doctorate degree, and come the bluff with a you know, with the top of the book was about the 38 box from England, that 38 box, the big one, that's the one they have to ship back to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Dr. Dr. Fuller, I said they remind you. They remind you. Know. Indeed, they remind you. <laughs> so... The biggest box, when they tell you box 38 is the big one, and they have to ship too, so you can go. <laughs> <laughs> so, like we say, all good things must come to an end, and this is the end of it, and we don't chop inside this time, so that's understandable um, because of the next time when we start. And of course, we got eloquent, um, and also today we join me, and uh, because of the you know, network issues then from um, Freetown, um, on the bullet so we can say, one forget, one forget, no, um, you know, vision. So thankfully, we are here clearly towards the end. So one for tell everybody thanks, and we're here again next week, same time, six o'clock salon time, and then seven o'clock UK time. And one for say many, many thanks to my co-host, to sweet Bonita. Hey! <laughs> Anyways, I go left with this one where I go share with everybody for make we um, the promises there, the wonderful promises there where we, um, how you call ourselves do for me. <laughs> okay, this is the which bill. And as I speak here, so the debt we see there for this country, the SLP is paying. Uh, that debt every month because that's now one of the conditionalities of the IMF for for for, 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 for me to say pay them debts then they will be left for this country. So this country, I mean, that's a big government on our president Bill. We don't do extremely well that we inherit the, the uh, governance which are almost a zero economy. We able for make sure say prudent economic management and rationalization of the economy for rollout to flagship project. Now we are paying the debts that the ABC left upon the look at, don't look at And it. we still the pay salary without overdraft. So COVID, the heat of COVID, maybe we are not starting the public things that we need manifest as a public debt and then we're just the ABC in 20 when SLP became a power, public debt now be 17 billion. 2020, when a 2020 budget now I use for analyze. In 2020, they get up 30.7 billion. 30.7 billion. To me, in the 10 years, 
if it's to be public, I have to be telling you the leader. In the 10 years of APC, the public debt has been 15 point zero for 10 years of APC. Just this three years of SMP, the public debt rise in 2020. And even the project has said, they go to so just in the seven years, public debt now go to fourteen point three trillion. Whilst in the ten years of APC, public debt now be fifteen point zero four trillion. Just a, a, a mere difference of less than one trillion. And quite apart from that, which I do, I take into consideration the last space we hear about seven million people left, and I distribute this debt among the seven million people that will get. Everybody, if everybody for contribute for long, we pay the debt to along with everybody for the four hundred and twenty five dollars. So if you get a picking set now for tell and say this government will lead to the debt four hundred and twenty five dollars for each Sierra Leone. Now in twenty nineteen, fifteen sub Sahara countries then classified for the Five billion in 2020. Yeah, we make the most affected country. Yeah, and now the external debt in dollars are two billion dollars. Domestic debt are one point one billion dollars. And we total debt that are for 2020 at three point one billion dollars. And you know, in fact, West Africa Monetary Zone, then they advise all nations say the public debt more for eighty five percent. At the top, so it's a lot of right now, now 77 percent of the Well, till next time, um, I want to say tata to everybody. Thank you all very much. Me and our comrade Owen Kasu, alongside Sweet Bonita, uh, wonderful guest, Dr. Vinod, Alfred Vinod Fuller, and Honorable as well. I want to say thank you to the technical team in the background, Mr. Mo Bangura. I want to say thank you to um, Professor Delwin, um, Dr. Amadou Denke. Um, thank you to a um, new kid on the block. We don't join me with uh, Mr. <clears throat> Joseph Saidu Momo and um, all the rest of the other members, them, Awun Papi, and the social media, and all the other guys. So, the next week, I want to say thank you.